And it was the Ornn ban that started G2's decline. In their first game when they lost to uh, PSG, it was Ornn that was banned away. Then RNG, Ornn was taken away. And now we see another Ornn being removed by T1. First pick up here for G2, Jankos looking towards that Graves. Yeah, I mean, this has been really good for G2 when he's got his hands on 100% win rate on the Graves thus far. And certainly his look strong in his ability to try and control the early state of the map, have that pressure in towards the mid lane as well, and just opening up the opportunity to try and play through that strong late jungle that G2 like. It does mean that the Ari is available for Faker, though he's played it twice so far at MSI. 100% win rate on that, yet to die on the champion wow. as yeah. well. Uh, Faker's Ari, very well-renowned around the world. Alongside that, Nautilus here, locked in for Carrion. Yeah, I'm curious, though, what we're going to get for Caps here. He was kind of the one that started this uh, Zoe trend in the mid lane, and I feel like if you've got the Graves, you've got the Zoe, you've got a lot of long-range uh, poke potential or even upright just kill potential there. Um, but we'll have to see what the plan is going to be for G2. I feel like taking something like your, um, your mid and your top here is probably going to be your best option. Well, there is the mid lane, LeBlanc for Caps. He's very well known for it in the LEC. He hasn't had the best games on it in the last couple that he's played, but it gives you that incredibly strong mid-jungle 2v2. It, like, LeBlanc and Graves is a match made in heaven in terms of damage potential. Alongside that, Broken Blade's going to lock in the Gangplank. Yeah, I mean, Gangplank has been incredibly strong over the course of MSI and just has that weak side top laner because you know you're going to have to blind pick it here on G2 side. So hoping instead that maybe they can get some nice pickups, say, in the AD carry position where they can kind of pick that. But we'll have to see what the game plan is going to be. Um, certainly, I think at the moment, you got that pick potential in the back line is sky high for G2 right now. And I agree with that. I'm just a little surprised. Oh. Wow, Gangplank into Rumble. Okay, I'm a little surprised if Broken Blade picks the Gangplank. He hasn't played it at all this year, even though it is very strong. And then the Rumble is an answer. Now, we have seen Rumble in the support role, but with Nautilus locked in, my expectations are this Rumble will be going top. Yeah, I imagine so as well. It's just, it's kind of curious to see that, right? Because you're looking at, okay, well, this is a composition that has a good amount of mobility with the Graves and the Blanc. You'll get a good matchup into the lane. But, I mean, if you end up taking some of these more mobile AD carries, which are being banned away by T1 at the moment, you actually have the, the opportunity to kind of move around from this rumble, especially if you're looking at something like Kaisa for Flacken in that bot lane. Well, we'll see if T1 agree with your assessment there, as you say, get rid of the Zaya to negate her ability to get away from that equalizer. G2 will remove Callista. There's going to be lots of AD carries pinched here yeah. already. Of course, the Lucian ban and the Caitlyn ban from phase one. Yeah, so you're kind of looking at picks like the Ezreal maybe coming through, but um, I don't really want to see that blind. I know a lot of people backstage will be very angry if that is the case, but I certainly think taking something like the Kai'Sa or maybe even banning the Kai'Sa yourself here from G2 and maybe looking for an Ezreal pickup yourself could work out just to give you the mobility away from what uh, T1 have picked up at the moment. Tom Kench, another one of those protective supports that can keep your AD carry safe, or anyone safe from that Rumble Ultimate. Here, though, if you ban Kaiser as G2, Ezreal can just be picked by yeah. T1. Gumiushi can take that for himself. Ezreal yeah. hasn't really been the strongest AD carry this MSI, but a lot of that's because Kaiser is such a good pick into it. Yeah, exactly. And I think, okay, with the Vi actually banned away, I was curious to see, because if you go for the Ezreal, you still got the answer of the Kaisa and also the Tristana as well, mm -hmm. right? And still having that mobility was available for a G2, but we'll have to see exactly what the game plan is here for Guma Yushi. Um, I mean, they could also just go for the top pick here, right? Like, leave that AD or carry jungle counter pick. pick. Or, sorry, jungle, jungle pick, pick yeah. yeah. Um, and go for the, the counter pick on the AD carry instead, which could work out super well. That looks to be what they're going to do. Viego gives you an AD threat in the jungle, which uh, with the Vi band and the Lee band is kind of really the only one left alongside that Wukong that's been removed. So having AD alongside those two AP top side of the map makes a lot of sense for T1. The only thing I'm worried about here for T1 is though you have very little engage and you're kind of relying on the skill shots from Faker or like a big hook coming through from the Nautilus. You're not getting that upfront kind of like an Alistair or Leona or some of that that can start you off. So I think looking at this, you're probably going to uh, look more for those pick opportunities using the long range of the Rumble Ols, follow up with the the Ari and see if you can catch G2 out in rotation. Yeah, get that slow and then see if you can follow up on that. Jin here for Flackard. No mobility in his kit itself, but his range does allow him to stay back at the start of team fights. You can just pop that, pop that ultimate to try and influence a fight. Alongside that, it looks like Targamus is going to opt for his Rakan. Yeah, and I think it's a good shout, right? So, I mean, you've got Jin, who's relatively safe in the bottom side of the map, so should be able to open up Targamus to look for some of these early roams, mm -hmm. particularly played through Caps, and that has kind of been the, the story of G2 thus far in MSI. And where we look across Guma Yushi, honestly, I feel like going towards um, something like the, the Kaisa could work out here, even if you wanted to go towards uh, the, the Jinx or the Aphelios. It's like Aphelios 
has got nerfed indirectly through the Gale Force nerfs, going from 90 seconds to 60 seconds, I'm sorry, 60 seconds to 90 seconds, but I mean, you can still play very strongly through this AD carry, and it looks like that's going to be the game plan here for T1. I mean, Gumin's also played it 11 times this year and won 10 of those games. Yeah, it's not like, a bad stat, is he's it? He's pretty good at this AD carry. We'll see if he can bring it out and have a good performance here against G2. Obviously, T1 trying to battle back from that 0-1 in the head-to-head -head so far, trying to battle back as well from a loss to EG earlier today. Yeah, and I think one of the cool things about Aphelios as well is that he can, in some certain situations, act as another engage tool, right? right. You get that in, uh, that ult with the Moonlight Vigil, you get the Gravitum, and that can be a way of trying to set things up. My biggest worry, though, for T1 is if Caps gets rolling early, there's very little things that can actually, like, hold him in place, right? There's just the Nautilus ult, realistically, that Caps has to try and worry about so it could open up this LeBlanc to really pop off if G2 can get the mid lane rolling. We'll see if G2 are able to get that jungle mid ahead. Caps has been strong in lane but nullified in the last few games. Teams have spent a lot of time making sure that he doesn't get rolling. Even in the RNG game he was out laning Xiaohu but you saw Wei was always there to try and make plays and Kerry are very well known for his roaming up towards the mid lane as well. Nautilus gives you that potential. Aphelios can be left alone down towards that bottom side. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the big game plan here from both sides, right? Is trying to wrestle control over this mid lane, get the supports involved, and then you can actually start to work around the map as well. Because obviously, quite a volatile matchup in the mid lane between the LeBlanc and the Ari. So whoever gets that lead suddenly gets to take control of side lanes as well. From undefeated to very beatable in the last few days, G2 and T1 trying to make a rise back up the standings. Only one of them can claim the win here today. Of course, both teams still have two more matches after this one. Both teams still have another day to try and rectify their woes. But a win here is a big signal to the rest of the MSI teams that you are not to be trifled with. Yeah, I feel like, though, whoever gets control of this early stages is just going to be able to blow up in this game. Like, you don't grab particularly tanky members on either side. You've got a ton of assassination potential, like resets galore uh, coming in on T1. It definitely feels like, looking at this, that if T1 can get these early leads, they have the potential to look for those fights and take the game off of G2 here. And T1, obviously, very good at getting early leads in the LCK, and even here at MSI, like, the last time they played against G2, they were 5,000 gold ahead yeah. at the 15 minute mark and G2 were able to fight back with that Diana Yasuo comp. But yeah. I wonder if, uh, if G2's early game struggles will continue in this game and if T1 will be able to jump and pounce and get that early lead. You can see at the moment, though, they're already trying to set up for vision control, right? Make sure they're able to spot out exactly where our owner is and give as much information as possible across. Caps now just making sure that he keeps tabs on Faker as they go and actually look for the Red Buff Steel here. So trying to look for a split map. Zayas came down from the top lane as well, puts the ward down. Broken Blade will meet with Zayas. Flame Spitter goes down. Broken Blade looking for that trial by fire passive, but just a single parlay won't mean they both trade about equally on health. Owner could look for a Red Steel, and we might actually end up with a split map here, Dagdor. Yeah, and I don't think it particularly favors, like, either side particularly much, to be honest. I think the big one is just trying to, like, remove Zayas from being able to punish as heavily on this rumble, like, trying to make sure that the GP can actually get up towards those later stages. But you still have to be careful around the spot side, right? Like, it's not like giving an Aphelios an easy lane is going to help you later on as well. So, uh, definitely trying to give Para to Broken Blade early and hoping they can still deal with Guma Yushi later on. Yankos has been pretty forthright with his early ganks in this... MSI usually goes towards the mid lane, of course, but Zeus here is pushed up the wave. Not in the best of shapes for him. I wonder if Jankos will look for something. No ward for Zeus. He used it earlier on. Broken Blade on the chase here. Zeus going to get pinged by that barrel, and Jankos is on the way. Red buff slows. Zeus tries to flash in the midst of the minions. The end of the line, not enough. Zeus burns his flash and has no TP to get back to land. And that's the big one, right? No TP available for Zeus because he took the ignite, which means now he's got to do, well, it's going to say the slow walk back, but he's actually going to stick around, which may prompt Jankos to go for something on this top side, but Owner is hovering on this bot side with a big wave about to crash as well. Of course, Zeus running the ignite flash here on the rumble in the top lane does mean that you can be caught out by these early ganks. You want to stay around to try and get the extra wave as it pushes in, but then sometimes you're repeat ganked, as you say, Dagda. And I think this is where it gets really interesting for Broken Blade, just build-wise, right? Because you can always go towards the... the um why have I forgotten the Trinity name? Holebreaker. Hole Holebreaker. Holebreaker. Yeah. Yes, thank you. And go straight for like, hey, I'm just going to play side lanes, right? Because you've got the ult to make sure that you're actually always going to be present in these fights. You've got the TP advantage as well. Zayas can't really push the wave back. So I think for Broken Blade, like in this later portion of the game, he should have full control of side lanes and make it really difficult for T1 to actually group up and try and look for these picks. 
I love games like this because although it sometimes looks like not a huge amount is happening, you have to think of the ramifications of each individual play. With a split map specifically, what you're looking at is how far ahead, oh, as the charm does land, Cap should be able to walk away from this one. What we're looking at for G2 is how far ahead can Broken Blade get? And what we're looking at for T1 is how far ahead can Gumiyushi and Kerry get? Because they've split the map down the middle. Ona will spend more time on the bottom side, Yankos will spend more time on the top side, and both the junglers are just willing to give up the opposite side of the map. Yeah, and that's why I was kind of looking to see what the story was going to be with Faker, right? Because yeah. Faker does have control over the mid lane. I was looking to see if when we got this fourth wave crash from bot side, if Faker was going to roam down. Because again, I think the, the actual thing that's going to break open this game is those mid lane roams. Because as you can see, Zayas already set pretty far behind. He still hasn't reset, which is why we're getting All broken lane able to bully him out. Ona is here. Yankos dashes it in. Zayas will fall for first blood. Ignite second on Broken Blade. Ona could look for the flash. Flash Spectral Mort is enough. The Orangers make Broken Blade K. He flashes away himself. Broken Blade trying to dodge around. Ona with the Blade of the Ruined King. That Q, a possibility, but it's not enough as the Parlay connects once again. Ona playing Ring Around the Rosies a little bit. It's true. Alcove Gaming in the top lane. Spectral Mort coming out. Broken Blade will still be stunned by it. Ona not quite enough damage to get a counter kill. A great play from Yankos there. Hiding in the Alcove. Pops over the wall. T1 of absolutely no idea. He's up there and just unfortunate for Ona. Trying to help out Zayas. Trying to get him that uh, shadow so we could reset, but it ends up giving two kills across the G2. And for T1 and for Zayas in particular, that was a bit of a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> We're going into a replay, hoping that Dad would do that one afterwards. <laughs> it's a great joke, but as you say, just using the Fog of War here, Yankos manages to sneak into this push. Yeah, really well played here. And as you can see, T1 with Zayas not having his flash available, which just goes down instantly. Owner tries everything, but just getting the oranges there in time for Broken Blade. And now Owner can't actually follow up. He has no flash. And Broken Blade just playing just at arm's length, so he can't fall as well. Charm's going to land here onto Caps. Hogmas is here, but a good hook. We mean that Caps is locked up. He's going to try and dodge across the wall. Flacken here to join the fray once again. Targamus in the right position to counter this out. He now flashes forward. They're looking for the damage onto Ono, who has no flash of his own. The chains will connect. Blackhead not able to get close enough for that final auto. And Ona escapes underneath his tower once again. Really nice job from both the bot laners of G2, though. Moving up, keeping the mid lane safe, and making sure that Caps doesn't end up falling there. And that's something you can do a lot with Jin, is just make sure that you're there with the Deadly Flourish to follow up on a bunch of this CC. And it's not like he's going to lose out on too much bot, right? Game Yushi pushes the wave right as Flacky gets down here. Look at where Zeus is once again. Yankos is behind him. There is a ward that's going to oh, spot him no. out for Zeus. You got no flash, you got no level six. And the bushes might protect you for a moment, but the chase is on. Broken Blade doesn't get the barrel combo. Perhaps not having played GP this year, not playing out too well for him. But Yankos comes in. Zeus hits six equalizer to try and clear out the wave. Meanwhile, in the mid lane, Caps forced away by Faker and Carrier. The chains come in. Faker uses the last spirit rush to escape. Deadly Flourish in the bottom lane. Targamus with the chase. The knock up. Gumi Yushi pops the heal and flashes over the wall. Caps now has to try and get away from Ona off towards the top side of the map. Has he got the distortion? Spectral Moor gets the stun. Caps locked up. Flashes and dashes up towards Broken Blade and Ona and Kerry are still on the chase here. Guma burnt both his summoners in the bot lane, is still underneath the tower. Yankos coming up as well, they're going to try and turn it around. Cannon Barrage just short, doesn't get the slow onto Ona. Kerry here will be able to hook himself back to the wall, should be underneath the tower, should be safe, but Yankos with the collateral damage misses. Blackhead kills Guma Yushi down towards the bottom side. No summoners on the T1 bot laner. He over pushes and he gets dived under his tower. What is going on in this game? It's just a bloodbath across the board. Caps is running one way. People are dying topside. <laughs> bot lane is going down. I mean, this is fantastic. This is so much fun. This is real League of Legends this right here. Yeah. <laughs> None of that messing about. But meanwhile, Faker was able to take a, a plate in the mid lane. G2, four kills to the good. 1,600 gold ahead in this early game. Yeah, and look, we're just going to get a replay on this bottom side as well. Guma here, stuck underneath the terror. No hope because they know exactly where Kerry is in top side. Just a nice, easy, quick pick. Just understanding, hey, look, he's going to be left by himself, and now you pick up your own plate on the bottom side as well. And the thing for Guma there is he hits six, right? So he's like, oh, I can Moonlight Vigil, grab it and stun. But assuming the Rakan tanks the tower first, he can always just dash back out to flack it. So well played yeah. by G2 to make sure no one was tanking the tower for too long. And I think the, the thing here now is G2 start to move up towards Zayas. Might have to hold on to my point. He's got flash, he's got a blast cone. It's going to be locked up. There's the equalizer going down. Zayas looking for the flash onto Broken Blade. No, he can only get a one for one in this case. Will pay for it with his life, but a one for one for T1 puts them on the board. Nice job from Zayas there to actually make that a one for one trade. With the mental resource that are invested up there, it could have gone so much worse. Doesn't mean that Rift Herald will go across to G2, but Kumiyushi, Red.
side and white gonna take down a lot of these turret plates and bot side and honestly just answer back for what that rift herald should get in a few moments time so realistically t1 evening up that trade and once again we have to look at the differences in the top lane and in the bot lane gumi yushi's gonna get five plates there might be a fight happening in the mid lane in a second but 300 500 gold ahead after he takes yeah. his tower up towards the top side, Broken Blade is about the same ahead of Zeus. And that's why I want you to look at that gold on the bottom of your screen, right? Because you're looking at Kuma Yushi, absolutely huge. Yankos, massive. And you're looking as well at Broken Blade, who has that advantage. And especially when you get the Umbro Glaive this early, you get to start to clear out vision. You start to stack up the... Uh... Oh, I'm actually going to hold on to this T1. No, you can hold it. Away. Grasp it but... gently. <laughs> hold Cuddless. it. Yeah, yeah. Hold it. No, nothing's going to happen. Um... But yeah, you get to stack up the Ghost Ward as well, super, super mm -hmm. quick. So you end up getting a bunch of that early adaptive damage as well, and you suddenly become a monster. So I'm definitely looking at Yankos to see how much work you can do. But honestly, I think T1 at the moment, like especially with the position that they were in, for them to be able to make these trades, even up the gold, get that dragon for themselves as well, they're doing a good job of fighting back against this early aggression of G2. Yeah, something T1 uh, are very good at. Just uh, I want to come back to that Zombie Ward point, because I don't know if we uh, always explain it. Zombie Ward, basically, when you take down a ward, you gain bonus attack damage or ability power up to 10 wards taken down. So you can get 12 extra AD, or I think it's 20 extra AP out of it. And that's how having the Umbral Glaive early when you're running Zombie Ward means that you just stack that up so much quicker. Yeah, and exactly. And that extra AD, obviously, going to be more impactful the earlier you can get exactly. it as well. So it's just a nice little trade. And why Graves is kind of risen up in the meta alongside the uh, the Umbral Glaive changes. So. Surprise! <laughs> Got him! Got him! Don't forget to grab your exclusive Scareprise gaming emote as you strut when you flash in and turn a fight. <laughs> I, had to, I had to get it out. Your yeah, point was great. Yeah, I thought you were getting yeah, to the yeah, end yeah, of it yeah. as well, you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, look, I mean, zombie war, sorry, zombie wars and ghost wars and all this kind of stuff. I mean, exactly. it's a good time, you know, Halloween all around, but Faker's not having the best of times as Yanko starts to show up again. Targamas. Should be all right. It should be okay. And T1 have managed to close the gold gap that we started to see developing by G2. It's now only 200 gold between the two teams. Gumi Yushi almost at 100 CS, almost at, you know, nine and a half, ten 10 a minute. And he's going to be very fed on this Aphelia. So already got the first mythic of the game with this Gale Force. And this is where I've got to try and figure out how T1 can include Guma in a lot of their fights. Because, yes, he is absolutely massive. But, you know, Caps should be playing just very quick in and out. Flak are playing at range. You've got the Broken Blade Ultimate that's going to cause Gumi Yushi issues as well. Sure. It starts to become a little bit more difficult for him to get these fights so you're heavily reliant on these good ultimates from Zayas Faker and both the uh, the skill shots from carry at landing to enable Guma in these fights so he's not just kind of kept out of pace. Well, keep our eyes on the T1 AD carry came into the tournament it's part of the best bot lane in the world carry has seen pro probably is the best player in the world yeah. coming into MSI and Guma Yushi alongside him is very strong has yet to live up to that potential in my eyes on the MSI stage I think Gala has generally just been the best AD carry at MSI and we'll see <laughs> we'll if take uh, out the last game <laughs> oh, yeah. ignore one game you know that's the thing with MSI right as the Rift Hole comes down in the top lane this will get plates uh, I don't know if Flackett attacked the tower recently oh hook's gonna land Flackett did get two of those plates and so yeah he gets some gold out of it as well uh, but yeah oh that's something about MSI that I, I always love watching and seeing and I'm part of it and we're all part of it as casters Best of one overreactions is just the most fun thing in the world. Because <laughs> everyone's like, G2 are the best team in the world as they look for perhaps something in the top lane. Then they lose a couple of games and then they're not the best team in the world anymore. When Carrier here, Ona coming in for the chase as well. Death Judge onto Flackhead. He just doesn't have the flash and the cleanse. Charm going out. Ona going in with the stun as well. But Targamas should just be able to dodge back here. The equalizer though, perfectly placed alongside the Inferno. T1 pounce in the top lane. Caps is coming up though. They're looking for a chase of their own. I don't know if Yankos is there because they can't see the minimap, but I'm sure T1 are waiting. Collateral damage going in. Caps hooked. Great hook from Carrier, Yankos takes one, Caps dives in, Caps goes down, it's a superb fight for T1 in the top lane, G2 overextend, and T1 clap them down. T1 are doing such a good job of fighting back in this game, they start off with the deficit, but they get the picks top, now another play top, they're getting so many turret plates onto Guma Yushi, now you're starting to trade kills as well, this is phenomenal from T1, and you'll see it here, right, you've already got Zayas moving up river, which is why T1 are good to go for this, they know Broken Blade has the ult, but with just two members here, and Zayas here, or sorry, two members from G2 and a fourth from T1 arriving, they know they can just take these down super easily, and you just don't have the advantage here. 2v4, yes, you'll get one back, but the help bar is just that little bit too high hook, for G2 man. to be able to take them down. The carrier hook stops Caps from getting the double bounce in, the heal coming out as well, and now the game really changes in favor of T1. Carrier with a hex flash into the hook, Targum's gonna dash away to Caps. Faker going in with the charm. Targamus tanks it instead of Caps. And Faker gets his first kill of the game. And now 
LT1 starting to pull ahead in this game. They're getting control of River. They're getting control of these kills. And with 50 seconds until the Dragon as well, they should be able to get bot side River control and set up for this Dragon. And you said it, Dagda. You said, can T1 involve Gumiyushi? He is strong. Can they use his strength against G2? They have done exactly that. Four kills, well, two kills to assist for him in the top lane. Now they're moving Kerry around the map. Now they're opening up the map. And it means these picks, these catches, where you don't need hard engage, are so much easier for T1. Gumayushi is terrifying. Yeah, he's a <laughs> this monster. man is about to back, probably pick up his second item, and you're looking across a flat kick going, hey, bud. Um, How's that uh, Gale Force treatment right now? Because my word, T1 are popping off. And again, you've already got first dragon for T1. They're going to be able to look for a second. And especially when you hit this mid game with like an Ari, the Rumble, Guma as well as fed as he is, T1 are looking very strong for these team fights. Guma has 7,300 gold. That's 500 gold a minute on this AD <laughs> carry. The guy is an absolute beast. And right now, T1 are playing around him perfectly. TP's coming in from T1 as Faker comes down to towards that bottom side. G2 currently have control over the river. Guma step forward. Yankos looking for something here. Flakid doesn't land. The captive audience. Faker still not there. Caps off towards the side. His owner tried to step forward. Still vision control in favor of G2. Remember that Umbral Glaive will help them out so much in situations like this. Even if it's already popped the passive, Yankos can still just auto a ward and kill it unless it's a control ward. G2 with control over the river. Faker. Oh, he's going to step. Oh, the chain misses. Faker has the time to spirit rush to the side. The rest of T1 collapsing from the top side. Caps still on the chase here. Spirit rush across the wall of possibility. Owner here to shepherd Faker back towards that dragon. That's such a big ultimate from Faker gone. So if T1 try and contest, Faker can't provide that engage to who we're talking about. G2 got to see if they can fight back here. Caps looking for a flank. Owner going in. Spectral Moor lands the stun. Hook just short. Caps still has a good flank position. Can of Rush. Argumus looking for the quickness. Caps there. Owner dodges. The Spectral more coming out, the equalizer down, and Targumus will burn, burn, burn! So will Yankos! Caps dives onto the back line, but he's only able to take a carry, and then he goes down as well! G2 got the dragon, overforced the fight, and T1 shut them down! T1 ended up missing a ton of their engage tools, which is why G2 thought they could take the fight, but you end up having Targumus ulted immediately by Kara. Phenomenal call from the T1 support! So T1 take the fight, they take the terror, and they'll get a good amount of gold off that play. And you see the gold swing, 3,000 in T1's favor now. They continue to accelerate this game, and even though G2 thought they had made, it, made a catch, it was T1 who were waiting in the darkness, ready to jump in. And this is the thing with T1, like Azeo said it, they're a sleeping beast, the LCK, yeah. often T1 especially. So whenever they come to an international tournament, you have to be wary. And I wonder, perhaps, if the last couple of results have woken T1 up from their hibernation. Yeah, watch here though. So we already talked about Faker not having to engage. The hook goes wide from Carry, and G2 are like two engaged to us down. Let's go. Targamus though gets hit by the depth charge. He can't follow up. Caps has been dealt with on the side before G2 can get the engage, and Broken Blade looks like he's dead. Nowhere for Broken Blade to go here. T1, the triumvirate of death collapses. Broken Blade will try and clear out a minion, but Ona will clear his HP. T1 with another kill. They've got Riftail down towards this bottom side as well, and they are pinging that tier two. Yeah, Broken Blade just too far up. You don't have pressure in any of the other lanes, and T1 able to collapse beautifully. And as you say, tier two potentially available for them. Gumiyushi and Kerry are starting to step tentatively forward to see if they can get this tier two in the mid lane as well. Of course, a huge win for T1 if they can claim this. Five and three separates them from that chasing pack. Also means the head-to-head -head with G2 is equalized. So if they match up on win-loss at the end of tomorrow, we would have to play a tiebreaker. G2, massive loss. Two zero two days in a row would be devastating for this European lineup, especially since how well day one and day two went for them. Riftail charging in here. Tier two taken by T1. They continue their advance towards the base. Counter take a tier one in response. And that will be that. T1 retreats to the safety of what used to be Jisoo's jungle, but is now owned by the LCK representatives. Yeah, and T1 have been doing such a good job of just playing out on the map. Caps trying to get something back to the top side, but with that Rift Tails, T1 get a huge amount. Now you're looking at a 3,000 gold lead. Collector completed for Gumi Yushi, and he's still just about to reset too. So I feel like when you look towards two and a half minutes, this next Dragon, I don't think G2 can really contest for it. I think you got to go and try and play side lanes, try and see if you can get some of that much needed gold back in your pocket and avoid T1 as you hit that spike. The good thing for G2 is they already took a mountain a second of the game, even though they lost the fight after it, making sure that T1 aren't stacking up towards a Hextech Soul, because by darn it, Hextech yeah. Soul? Were they an Aphelios <laughs> and a Rumble and a V8? Like, no, no, you do not want to play into that. In my opinion, the strongest soul in the game, true damage tick, 
and a slow and chains on the autos is just absolutely deadly. However, Fate here might be in a deadly situation. Spirit rushes away from the deadly first capsule on the chase, but two Spirit Rush charms left for Faker means that he should just be able to dash his way out of this one. Charm, though, into the equalizer. Cap's gonna jump across the wall here. Faker's still on the chase. Hook just short. Owner here with a flank position. Caps is now isolated from the rest of G2. Targum is stunned. Carrier. Dredge line of possibility. But with the equalizer down, I think T1 are just buying time for Gumiyushi to continue to push in this top lane. Yeah, it's a split map though. You got Broken Blade on bot side, T1 going in to try and help Guma on the other end. So again, I like this from G2. When you're behind like this, trying to trade even across the map is going to be great, but you do have to make sure you get this terror reset and you're not going to lose an inhibitor turret. Faker with another great charm into the Evercroft. The chase is on. Faker flashes away, caps under the tower. Hook lands. T1. They don't want you to be able to play on the other side of the map instead. They look for the plays themselves. Caps gets the shutdown onto Faker. In but a tower falls in the top lane. Zeus underneath this tower, forced away by Broken Blade, but there's no minion wave. The inhibitor will go down. T1 will take that in the top lane. Will they keep pushing? I doubt it. Instead, they take the Hextech gates out and find their way to safety. That's an inhibitor down on the top side of the map, though. And uh, you've got 45 seconds until this next dragon. It becomes so much harder for G2 to make that play we are just talking about, where you can try and cross map for a tier two in the top lane because you're up against the super minions. T1 played that immaculately. The willingness just to say, okay, 3v3, we go in. We fight this. T1 new. If yeah, Faker dies, that's fine. We don't even lose the tower out of it. There was shut down, I believe, going over his caps. He's now got himself a Blightning Jewel, but that LeBlanc is not looking too scary yet. Only the Ludens Blightning Jewel. Only an item and a half on Flackard as well, whereas Gumiyushi almost at three completed items. That Infinity Edge is going to hurt. And this is where you're gonna have to see if T1 can once more set up for this fight. Faker and carry it, two eyes on them to get onto the core members of G2. Yanko's starting up the dragon. Zayas has the equalizer. Carrier doesn't have the depth charge. There's the equalizer down. It's only gonna help G2 for the moment. Carrier going in, Broken Blade looking to flash out. Caps can dash as well. G2 get the dragon and get out. Yeah, and just the fact that Owner got his back reset, or start, had to restart it, meant that he couldn't get the reset he wanted in time to get out towards Dragon. So G2 finding that very brief window where they're actually able to get out. So at least for the moment, keeping these Dragons within touching distance and buying time for this Gangplank to come online, for them to hit that later point where maybe they can try and fight back against T1. Uh, can you just check your watch for me there, Dagda? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's about 20 minutes. It's Baron o'clock for T1. <laughs> They, uh, they oh god, just this lost makes the fight. Gumiyushi going forward, perhaps baiting in Kerry with the flash across the wall and oh, incredible engage! T1, take G2, lift them up and break their spines over their knee! T1 are breaking G2 like it's absolutely nothing! They baited Baron, knowing that everyone thinks they do that, Baron o'clock, but it turns out it's time to end the game, Medic. 21 minutes for T1. It feels like a record for the Rumble Sage. Cam's trying to do what he can, but once again, he's charmed up, and he has been anything but claps today. T1 unwilling to go quietly into the night. You woke the beast, and the beast is angry. T1 will destroy G2, dismantle them, and European fans can only watch in despair as the LCK rises again. The LCK will not be denied going to five and three, pushing up into that second place. And that was domination from T1. Early game was definitely in favor of G2, but T1 able to fight back so well to take this victory. Beautiful stuff from them.